Before starting a perennial bed, there's one question you should be asking, and me and Ella today are gonna give you the answer. Roll the intro. In this video, we're gonna be looking at plant zone maps and how to read them, as well as microclimate maps and why they matter. And lastly, we're gonna be looking at plant tag. All three of these factors are gonna help you determine what perennial to plant in your garden and not waste your money. What we won't be covering is vegetable gardens. If you're wanting a video on that, I'll link it below. Every country has their map, but for this video, we're just gonna be focusing on the USDA map and the Agriculture and Agri-Foods Canada map. Zones are essentially specific climatic conditions that exist within the region. It's based on topography all the way to precipitation and snow cover. The country maps are very broad and generalized. They're meant to help farmers decide what crops to plant and environmentalists to decide how an ecosystem is performing. It doesn't help a gardener achieve greatness because it doesn't show you the microclimate within your specific city, for example. Which leads us to point two, microclimates. I'm going to encourage you to try to walk through these steps with me but you can simply just Google your city and it'll probably tell you as well. Each province and state breaks down their microclimate based on just that state or just that province. It helps us zoom in on exactly what exists within those regions. So we're gonna start with the United States resource and that was done by the USDA. It's a really awesome website. I was thoroughly impressed when I was going through it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the link below and it's gonna open a screen the USDA plant hardiness zone map appears. At the top, you can enter your zip code and it will tell you your zone in blue below. Or you can select your entire state and it will give you a climate map for the entire state itself. For Canada, the website isn't necessarily harder to use, it's just not as clean looking, but I'll walk you through how to use that as well. You can just click the link below. And it's going to take you to the Agriculture and Agri-Foods Canada map. There's a legend. The legend is going to show you what each one of the colors mean. Then you can either click on your region or you can search it to find your zone. From there, a box is going to pop up and in the box it's going to tell you what your climatic region or your climatic zone is. Once you know what your zone is, we can go into how to read the labels and how to pick a perennial that's going to work for you. This is gonna save you a lot of time and a lot of money. All perennials have tags. These are just a few of the popular ones where you can find the zone info. I'll have it circled. Usually it's on the back, sometimes it's on the bucket. The zones almost always are going to be stated in a range. So the range can involve usually three zones, but sometimes can be up to five zones at a time. If you're a beginner, when it comes to perennials and gardening, I suggest that you pick a plant that has your zone either as the highest possible zone or somewhere in the middle. Do not pick it if your zone is at the bottom of the range. If you're willing to try and experiment a little bit, or if you're more advanced, you can actually pick a range where your zone is at the bottom. Now, if your zone is at the bottom of the range on the tag, you wanna make sure you take extra precautions, such as burlap wraps, mulching, watering um, and positioning of the actual plant itself. If you find something you like, such as a rhizome or a bulb or a root that is completely out of your range, don't hesitate to try it out. All you need to do is read the label. For example, this one that I purchased is completely out of my zone. I'm zone three. This is zone seven to nine. To make these work where I am, what I do is I plant them in the spring, get the bulbs started. Then I follow the winterization instructions on the back. For example, this one says I have to keep it at 10 degrees Celsius in a dark place. So what I do is I just stick it in a nylon sock or keep it dry out of moisture in my basement. That's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what zone you're in and what perennial combinations you've tried. I'm particularly interested if you're in a cold climate. I'd love to hear what you planted. Um, especially if you're in zone three, hit me up. But I'm always looking for you. But thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, comment and share. It helps me build my channel. I'm trying to up my YouTube game lately. Um, and I'm just trying to get noticed and things like that. I'm very passionate.
passionate about planting. I did a university degree in soil science. And it's just, I can go on and on forever. So you can help me build my channel and foster my obsession. <laughs> as unhealthy as it can be. Um, that, I'd really appreciate that. I really love that. Um, have an awesome garden season this year. It is springtime, so enjoy what little sun you do or you may get. And I'll talk to you guys next time. See you. Bye. I